Hello again. It's so lovely to be with you, continuing our, our assembly series this term on change. Today we're going to think about a change of heart because um, one of the two main characters in our story had a huge change of heart. We'll come back to that in a minute. Let's think about what sort of things we might have a change of heart over. We, are you like me? I wonder when I was when I was young at school, I used to think, I can't do maths, I can't do maths, I can't do maths. And then somebody showed me how to do a, 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 a certain sum. And all of a sudden I thought, oh, I can do maths. I can do it. And in fact, instead of dreading it, I began to really enjoy it had a real change of heart about doing maths because all of a sudden it interested me. When I was a little girl, my mummy taught me how to knit and I've always knitted for years, not very well, but I've, I've enjoyed knitting um, very well indeed. But earlier this year, a friend of mine called Margaret um, had shown me that she does crocheting, which is you probably know that it's different. Instead of using two knitting needles to knit, you crochet with one needle. Here's mine, here's, my, here's one of my crochet hooks here. And she tried to teach me, and it was hopeless. Um, and I kept saying, no, no, I'm a knitter, I'm a knitter, I'm not a crochet. But when I got home, I, I thought, you know, I really want to have a go at doing what she was doing. So I went on YouTube and I, I looked up how to learn to crochet on YouTube. And I, there I was sitting with my, with my ball of wool and my, and my needle and uh, my crochet hook. And I was learning how to do it. I kept pressing pause and saying, oh, what does that look like? Oh, yes, until I'd learned how to do it. And now I'm actually making what's known as a temperature blanket. And every time I check the temperature every single day and then I, I crochet a line right across with the, uh, in a certain colour for each temperature. Wait, and I'll show you a little bit of it. Well, I'll fill the screen with it. This is, look, look, this is it. Can you see? Oh, oh. and I still haven't got to the end of it because I can't fit it in the screen. And here I am here. We're halfway through October and I need to do it. Did you see the very hot, the very hot ones? These were the day these this was the days when it was 40 degrees. That was hot, wasn't it? I have had a total change of heart about crocheting. I love to crochet. And the funny thing is that because I've got all these silly nobbles on my fingers now that I'm old and got arthritis in my hands, it's more comfortable for me to crochet than to knit. So it's win all round. I've had a change of heart. The people in my story today, the man in our story today who had a change of heart about something it was much more serious and important than my changing heart towards crochet. Let me tell you, his name is Peter. And I suspect you've probably heard his name before because Peter was one of the very first followers that Jesus chose to go round with him and learn about all the things he was going to do for people and to learn about how much God loves all of us. And while Jesus was still with Peter, he did say to him, I've got a huge job for you to do and you're going to do it till the end of your life and that is you're going to go around and you're going to tell people about me and you're going to tell people about how much God loves them. And that's what he did. He actually did that for the rest of his life. But when he first started doing that job, he honestly, truly believed that Jesus had come for the Jewish people. He'd been a Jew. Jesus was born into a Jewish family. All Jesus' disciples were Jews, and then they became Christians. And so Peter felt that the, his main job was to tell um, the Jewish people about Jesus. 
And so that's what he was doing. And one day he was visiting um, a friend of his, another Christian of his, who lived um, who lived in a town called Joppa. In fact, we have the guy's address. <laughs> it always makes me laugh in the Bible when you can get an address. And his name was Simon the Tanner. A tanner is just someone who works with leather. Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea in Joppa. <laughs> That's how the Bible describes him. And he was staying, Peter was staying with Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea in Joppa. And uh, people would meet with him every day and learn more and more about Jesus. So I want you to picture that and to leave him there in your mind, just on one side. And I'm going to introduce the next person in the story. Just a few miles up the coast <clears throat> from Joppa was a town called Caesarea. Now Caesarea was what we call a garrison town. You might not have heard of that before. You might have done. A garrison town is a town where a whole regiment of soldiers would live. Woolwich today is a still a garrison town. There's a whole regiment of soldiers that live in Woolwich. You probably passed the, the Woolwich barracks. That's where they actually sleep in a barracks. So Caesarea was a garrison town just up the coast from Joppa. And the Italian regiment was based there under the leadership of Captain Cornelius. Captain Cornelius is a real hero of mine uh, because although he was Italian, and he was part of the Roman army. He actually, when he came over to live in Caesarea uh, with his regiment, he actually really began to admire the, um, the Jewish God. And so he, he was really understanding and nice and people liked him, even though he was part of the Roman army. They really liked him because he was fascinated by anything to do with God. And one night when he was sleeping, God spoke to him in a dream and said, Cornelius, if you want to know more about me, send to Joppa because one of my men, Peter, is staying there in the house of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea in Joppa. Send for him and he'll help you. When Cornelius woke up the next morning, it's exactly what he did. He called a couple of his soldiers to him and said, March all the way down to Joppa. Um, might have taken them about 12 hours to do it. but And Romans, of course, in those days, they didn't have tanks or big lorries to drive or jeeps or anything like that. They had to march. So they marched all the way down and go. he said, go and bring Peter back to me. I want to speak to him. So they started out on their march marching down to Joppa. Right, now, get back to Simon the Tanner who lived by the sea in Joppa's house and picture Peter. In the afternoon, he'd been teaching about Jesus all morning and he was tired and it was very hot. And as you know, probably in hot countries, people often snooze in the afternoon. So he went up onto the roof of Simon the Tanner's house who lived by the sea in Joppa and he fell asleep. And God put a dream into his mind as he was sleeping. And God was saying to him in the dream, you know, as Jewish people, you c we can't go and eat in people who aren't Jews in their houses or eat the food that they have because we have special food that we eat as Jews. And God said to Peter, that's not going to be a rule anymore. Everything that you're offered can be eaten and everybody who invites you to their house, whether they're a Jew or not, you can go and eat with them. And he was waking up, you know when it's like when you've had a strange dream and you're thinking, what was that about? Well, that's exactly what Peter did, he came to. And as he came to, he heard on the front door of Simon the Tanner who lived by the sea in Joppa's house and when they opened the door, there were Cornelius's two soldiers saying, Is Peter here? We've got to take him back to our captain because he wants to speak to him. So off Peter went because he thought, Oh, I think this is what God's meaning. I can go 
to Cornelius' house. He's not a Jew, but I can go with I can go and visit him and eat with him. So, hey, that's what happened. By the time Peter and the two soldiers arrived back at Cornelius' house, Cornelius had filled the house with his friends and his family and other soldiers and their friends and family. It was packed to the rafters. And they listened and they listened and they listened to all that Peter said. And in fact, they listened so much that it was absolutely sure and certain in Peter's mind. Um, He saw the power of God coming down on all these people. Christians call that the Holy Spirit. And they came and rested on everyone in that house. And not one of them, apart from Peter, had been Jews. And it was absolutely amazing. And Peter... His change of heart was this. He realized that no longer need he worry that Jesus had just come for the Jews, but rather that Jesus had come for everyone. And Christians still believe that today Jesus came for everyone so that we might know just how much God loves us. I'm going to pray. Dear God, thank you for the story of Cornelius and Peter and how Peter had a change of heart when he learnt something new from you. Thank you that every time we learn something new, we too can have a change of heart and try to become better people as we share your love in the world. Amen. Until next time, bye-bye.